Nightcrawler. No, I'm afraid I'm not talking about an X-Men spin-off featuring our favourite teleporting mutant. I am, in fact, talking about this Jake Gyllenhaal movie, uh, this 2014 release, where he stars as Lou Bloom, who is a despicable human being, as I'll come on to in a second. Now, this film is very highly regarded in regards to its kind of artistic credibility, and it's been doing a lot on the kind of the award circuit, and and, and has got you know largely sort of favourable reviews. And I agree, it's a fantastic film. But there's one comparison which I haven't really seen anyone say, but I you know I called it. And this movie is to me a, a kind of love child between Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer and the James Bond movie Tomorrow Never Dies. But now, before I explain that a little bit, let me tell you a little bit about the movie. This basically focuses on a character called Lou Bloom, who is essentially this kind of low life who will do, basically do pretty much anything for, for money. And he, at the beginning of the movie, he's kind of stealing kind of scrap and sort of selling it on, basically. But he sees an opportunity in the world of media, basically, where he's sort of sees there's like a, a, a crash, kind of quite horrific crash. And, and basically, there's a kind of a uh, team of cameramen there who basically film it and then sell it onto kind of news stations for, for obviously for profit. So basically, he decides this is what you kind of want to do. This is how he's going to make somebody. So he buys himself a camera, gives himself this kind of like homeless assistant and pays him like peanuts. So it basically manipulates him and goes around sort of trying to kind of film a variety of different kind of crime or, or kind of horrific accidents and things like that and basically he sells this footage to this kind of local sort of news station who's headed by uh, Rene Russo and basically he's kind of ends up becoming uh, quite unscrupulous and manipulating situations so he can get better footage and as the film progresses he's kind of he gets kind of worse and worse and so he gets quite criminal in, in regards to what he's sort of doing to try and kind of get the best shots and the best footage but it's also a look at how maybe the, the kind of these news corporations sometimes will kind of turn a blind eye to things like that just so they can kind of get the ratings and how they kind of different crimes and their kind of importance in, in regards to some that it's for example you know who who is the victim is it a you know a rich white person compared to a kind of someone who's from a poor background or an ethnic background and people are going to care less about so it does kind of shine a light on on the, certainly in this world at least the, uh, the, the some of the kind of the morality behind kind of news reporting and uh, really it's 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 it lose kind of descent into becoming kind of more and more uh, criminal in, in in the way that he sort of operates and so sort of the fact where he, towards the end of this movie there's quite a serious crime that he's actually actually witnesses and the way he kind of manipulates the situation to get his own means and now why do I sort of compare it to those two movies Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer and uh, Tomorrow Never Dies so in my mind uh, Lou Bloom is a psychopath. Even though he doesn't directly kill anyone himself, he clearly has no empathy himself. Uh, and basically, as the film progresses, without kind of spoiling anything, you'll see him do some quite despicable things and have no remorse about what he's doing to the kind of the effects of other people. Basically, but he doesn't care about his co-worker, even his kind of love interest, which is to a degree uh, Rene Russo. He's not doing it because he has romantic feelings. That he's doing it because he simply wants to get up that sort of corporate ladder and that's his kind of only sort of you know only only motivation for doing it really and uh, the guy clearly has a sort of personality disorder so that's kind of right in a way why it reminds, how it reminds me of of henry portrait of a serial killer because it's kind of that study of of this kind of psychopathic sort of personality now tomorrow never dies actually had this the plot where you basically had Jonathan Price's character who was the bad guy manipulating events so he could get kind of news coverage of it which is kind of the same thing that Lou Bloom does obviously uh, it doesn't have all the kind of the action trappings and stuff like a James Bond film but it, essentially it's kind of a similar kind of premise where we have someone who is going out there to manipulate situations so they can get a, basically a scoop on it and then make money from it. So it kind of does remind me of, of Tomorrow Never Dies in that respect. So I don't know if anyone else picked up on that. So that's why I say it's a kind of it's kind of weird mix between the two of them. Now, if I had to pick a hole in this movie, that, that, this is a fantastic film. There's no, no no doubt. But let me let me say two things. Firstly, if you're not a fan of kind of this very sort of dark subject matter, uh, very sort of despicable characters, and you you know you want to get you, you want to get a, with, a, with a film where you can kind of get behind the main sort of protagonist and kind of you see the motivation and things like that, you may not like this film because the the, the main character here is purely a despicable character. It's very interesting. And you, you know, you're fascinated to watch him, but he's not a likable person. So some people may be put off by that. And I guess the only real criticism I have, and this is a bit of a nitpick, if I'm completely honest, 
Lou Bloom's character is clearly very intelligent. He retains information. Um, you know, he seems to be very kind of savvy in regards to, you know, his learning abilities and things like that. He's very ambitious. So I don't understand in a way how he how he's in kind of such a low spot at the beginning of the movie where he's really doing very kind of petty crimes to be able to kind of just to get into me because he seems like he'd have the intelligence and the kind of the ambition to kind of, kind of do something and we do see that with that in the movie when he kind of gets um, you know uses the situations and obviously to manipulate you know his his own kind of uh fortune so to speak i have to say also this this movie does sort of shine a light on the kind of the news industry uh, to some degree and how they kind of sometimes may not care necessarily about the morality of, of different things and as long as it kind of gets them the the, the, the latest viewing figures and things like that so that's also a kind of another element of it but like I said, I guess the only thing I think, how is this guy in, in, in such a bad place at the beginning of the movie? But that's really a nitpick. Uh, this is really a great movie, and it's a kind of crime th- thriller in, in a way, although our main character really is, is a peripheral to the actual crimes that are happening. But nevertheless, it's a, it's a fascinating view. I actually watched it with someone who didn't really enjoy it, I've got to say, but I actually did enjoy it. And I'm going to give this movie a 9 out of 10. What did you think of it? Leave me a comment, and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now. Wow.